Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've seen you. <laughs> Good evening. Guys, come on in. Join me tonight. Hey, for this amazing Bible study um, that we're going to be doing tonight on dealing with toxic emotions. Um, I know we've talked about this before, but we're going to talk about this tonight from a different spin. Um, so those of you who are joining, come on in. Hi, baby. How are you? Come on in, guys. Invite somebody. Do a watch party. We're going to be talking about dealing with uh, displaced toxic emotions. Hey, Shay. What's up, girl? I haven't seen you guys in so long. I missed you. Amen. So we're going to be talking about tonight. Our Facebook Live post is um, talking about dealing with displaced emotion. Amen. Uh, for those of you who have never been on a live with me before, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Pastor Tanya Hutchings from Salt Community Worship Center, and I welcome you to our, our uh, discussion tonight. We're going to be talking about dealing with displaced emotions. What happens when a toxic person dies? Uh-oh, y'all. We're going to be talking tonight. I hope you tune in, get a grab a friend, do a watch party, share. Uh, come on in. We're going to give a couple of more people a few minutes to come in and see what we can talk, what we're going to do tonight about this topic. We're talking about dealing with toxic, displaced emotions. What happens when someone you love or someone you've had a toxic relationship with dies. Um, and I think we're going to have a great time with this topic tonight because there are a lot of people who are dealing with displaced emotions from the passing of a loved one that may not have been so great. Hey, Candice. Hey, Ma, how you doing? So you guys come on in. We're going to give them about another minute to see if we can get some more people on the line I, I ask that you share this video that you do a watch party for your friends because we are coming into the holiday season and we know that this is a hard season for a lot of people um, that have lost loved ones um, or you know going through transitional times within the family dynamic so this particular topic has really been on the, on my heart uh, for a while, and I didn't quite know how I wanted to um, approach it. But the Holy Spirit, man, He's so amazing that He just He just gives us um, He just gives us everything we need, Amen. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and pray. So we can get started because I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Amen. I'm going to drop it and I'm out. Amen. All right. But I just want to say thank you again for spending time with me tonight uh, for a few minutes just to talk about this, this topic about dealing with um, toxic emotion. What happens when a toxic family member or a toxic person in your life passes away? What, what happens after that? Amen. So let's go ahead and pray. Um, most gracious Father, we just thank you tonight for this time in your presence. I thank you for those who have allowed me to come into their home tonight. I thank you, Lord God, that you will give them some time to sit um, and bring their family into this message tonight, that you will be able to deal with old wounds and old scars. Father God, as they listen to this message, I pray that you deal with old wounds and old scars tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you begin to heal hearts and heal families, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that every bondage of the enemy is broken and it will be broken through these words that you are going to implant in our hearts tonight, Father. So we just bless you tonight, God. We thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said earlier, our topic tonight is what happens when a toxic person dies dealing with displaced emotion. So let, let's, let's go ahead and dive on in. Many of us um, have lost family members. And, you know, coming into the holiday season, that's a tough season for a lot of people because, you know, maybe you've lost a husband or a child or a parent or a friend or 
um, a love, you know, a close friend or work friend or whatever. <laughs> and it's a hard place when you are dealing with the grief and the and the stages of grief that happen when you have lost a loved one. And many times, um, you know, we go through those stages of grief, and we're going to talk about the five stages of grief during this broadcast. But many times, when you're dealing with um, top, when you're dealing with the death of a loved one, you know, you have memories and you have things that can hold you during the process or during the grieving process. But what happens when those feelings are not um, favorable feelings, when you've dealt with a family member or a person in your life who has been toxic, someone who had, you don't have a great relationship with, someone that you don't particularly like, or there's even been instances where someone that you, don't, that you may hate um, that is a part of your family or a part of your circle, and they and they pass on so we're going to talk about some of the things that can happen when we don't handle those displaced emotions amen um one of the things i want to say that about this topic is many times and and, and we're going to talk about five things or five stages or reasons why the death of someone that you that is toxic can cause you a complication. And when we talk about those things, I want to hear from you. I want you to give me some feedback. I want you to talk to me because there are people in our lives right now who are dealing with the death of a loved one, who are dealing with, you know, all types of losses. And not all of them are great memories. Not all of them are great situations. So we want to be able to... Um, get healing on every level. So the first thing I want to do before I go into those reasons, I want to go quickly over the stages of grief. Um, there are five stages of grief that they normally talk about. There, there are more, um, but there are at least five stages of grief that we want to address. And they are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And these are the, the, the five stages of grief that the psychologists have deemed that the average person goes through when they're dealing with the, the loss of a loved one or a family member. So we talk about the denial stage first, when you are in denial that this person is sick or you're in denial that they are deceased. Um, and you are trying to process the whole thing in your mind. What happened? How did this happen? And all of those things. So you're in denial about the, the situation. You're in denial about the death. You're in denial about the sickness or whatever's going on with this person. The next stage is anger. We become angry with God. We can become angry with the doctors. We can become angry with the family member. We can become angry dealing with the uh, in the stage of grief where we can can't understand why is this happening why is this person sick why did this person die how did we end up here maybe they were a church person a person who attended church and you want to know god how did you let this happen he was a man of god or she was a man of god or um you know so we go through this this period that we deal with anger the next stage in the grieving process is bargaining. Now, this normally happens um, before someone passes, but it can happen after someone passes. So we begin to bargain with God or bargain in the situation. Well, God, if you if you don't let them die, you know, I'll serve you forever. Or if you if you bring them back, God, you know, I'll do this or I'll do that. And so we go through this whole process of bargaining, um, trying to have some kind of control or, or some type of way being involved in the process, trying to bargain our way into the, having this loved one back. Then we move into depression. This is where the reality of the, the, the person's death or sickness has begun to sink in. We begin to deal with the reality that they're no longer here. Um, and we begin to deal with the reality that they may not be here uh, much longer. And we begin to go through depression. And normally this deals with ap appetite, sleep disorders, uh, emotional fits, crying, um, not being able to function on a regular basis. 
uh, isolation. These are some of the things you may see in that stage of depression. And then finally, um, if you're going through a healthy grieving process, you will reach the stage of acceptance where you just you have come to the realization that either this person is gone or you've come to the realization that they're going to leave. And during this stage, a lot of times, um, people will come to the realization that if the person was sick um, over a period of time that, okay, they're in a better place. Or if the person dies from a tragic uh, situation, you know, you find some way to accept and move on that this person is no longer with us. Now, you remember I said that this is in a healthy grieving process. But when we're talking about dealing with toxic situations and toxic people, the grieving process can be shifted and it can also be stagnated for a lot of people. So let's talk about those five reasons why the death of a toxic loved one could be detrimental or could complicate the whole grief process. Amen. And if you're still with me, if somebody will give me a, a thumbs up or something, if you're still with me, I want to welcome um, some more of our guests tonight. Uh, Miss Gloria, Mama Gloria, Minister McNair, uh, Darlene Jenkins, how you doing? Diane Hardy, guys, I thank you. My daughter Erica, thank you guys so much for coming in. So we're going to talk about those five reasons why the uh, death of a toxic person can cause complications in the grief process. So number one, 